And as we see, we need to be prepared. God has prepared for us. We need to be prepared for him. We need to have everything ready. He's a coming back. And one of these days, it's either going to be that we get to go with it, be with him, or that we don't get to go to be with him. Uh, I, one more thing here I want to look at before we close. And uh, I don't know why... Uh, uh, it says in uh, chapter 6 and verse number 1, I just want to look at the first part of that. It says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe is them. And as I thought about that, Amos began chapter 6 with a woe that would connect his thoughts here with the woes mentioned in, in, in Amos 5 and 18. This woe is proclaimed unto those who are, uh, who are at ease in Zion. Some of the Israelites were living in a careless matter. They were depending upon a false security based upon a heartless ritual and worshiping their blindly believed would satisfy them. You know, there's a couple verses that we can look at over in Colossians chapter 2 and, and verse number uh, 8. I think it is uh, uh, 2 and 8. Uh, uh, look what he says over here of this, of uh, the book of Colossians 2 and verse 8. He said, Beware uh, lest any man spoil you through the philosophy and vain deceit after tradition of your world, after the rudiment of the world, and not after Christ. People today says it's okay to do all of these things. Uh, people today says you don't have to be saved. People today is saying you don't need to, uh, to, to do that. It's okay. We're living in a world today. It's different than when our parents and our grandpa and grandmas lived. Uh, we're living in the same world. And, and I, I, I thank God I still preach the same message that I was told 20, uh, 40, 49 years ago. And about the time I had only two three years under me on I went to hold a revival and there on the pew was was my old preacher two of my old preachers and both of those men added up to 103 years of ministry that I sat under in my short time as, as a person. Uh, you know, I, I want to still be in delivering the same message, and don't you want the same message delivered that you used to listen to when you was a kid? Or don't we want to live the same kind of life our grandparents taught us to? My grandma, when, when I was an older, per, older person, about the time I got married, said she had 37 grandkids. I don't know how many great grandkids she had, but uh, grandpa uh, always bragged when I was around and some of the rest of them, uh, he would say they were talking about uh, uh, the bad grandkids. And grandpa always told them, uh, Roy, they called me Roy Carl when I was in trouble. Roy Carl was the only one of all of my grandkids that I ever did get to spank. I felt blessed. <laughs> he blessed me real good, though. <laughs> but as we look at these and as we think, another one, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. Look what he says over here in this verse. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold from vain conversation received by tradition from your father. See again. For as much as ye know ye were not redeemed. We were not redeemed from traditional things. We were not redeemed through the, uh, through the blood of a goat. Uh, uh, we were not redeemed through the uh, blood of a pigeon. That was law. We're not under law. He said, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We are redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Aren't you glad today we can say we are redeemed, we're redeemed. And thank God one of these days, because we are, we can go home and be with Jesus. And am I done? 
Well, uh, I see the clock back there. I've got one more. Uh, I went through Tim's book with my red pencil, and I didn't have a. Uh, uh, the people of Israel had trusted in, in their own power and strength. Our people today are trusting in their own power and in their own strength. The word, therefore, in verse 7 is the introduction of Amos to the coming judgment. And that's found in uh, uh, chapter, chapter, chapter 6 and verse 7. It's, it's a saying, uh, chapter 6 and verse 7, uh, he goes on, Therefore now shall they, go, shall they go captive with the first that go captive, and, uh, but therefore... Is, is he's a saying, uh, is the, in verse 7, introduce Amos uh, to the coming judgment, the very one who had been first in riches and, po and politics and uh, would now be first to face judgment. Uh, they, they, would be, uh, they would be first to, uh, 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 to go in exile. Those who were first in sin uh, will be the first to go into captivity. Uh, as, sure, as sure as we're here today, there's a day coming that we need to be ready. Father, we thank you now for this lesson. We hope that, Lord, we've done it the way that you would want it. You wanted us to do it. We pray that it might speak to someone's heart, that maybe somebody here today, Lord, that's uh, not saved or not right where they need to be, we pray, dear Lord, that they can realize today that uh, the, the, you have pronounced upon us that judgment's coming. And help us now, Lord, that we might make our lives right, that when judgment comes, that we'll be at home with you. And, Lord, we thank you now for everything you've done in Jesus' name. And amen.